The second phase of the ChatGPT era is here. ChatGPT has officially launched its iOS mobile app. Welcome back to the AI Breakdown. When the history books are written, it's pretty clear that this phase of the AI era or the generative AI period will be started with ChatGPT's launch last November of 2022. ChatGPT showed that it wasn't just the underlying AI technology that mattered. It was also the interface. It was also the way that people interacted with that AI that really brought it from a novelty to something that was transformative in the world. And that, I think, is what makes yesterday's announcement of ChatGPT's iOS app so significant. To me, it's not just a set of features. It's a fundamentally different paradigm for ChatGPT. I'll get into a little bit more about what I mean by that, but first, let's go through the actual announcement. OpenAI's developer relations person Logan says the official ChatGPT app is here. It's another huge step forward in the product and comes with tons of new features. He points to what he calls a beautiful new UI and a new feature, which is voice to text. He also points to another new feature, which is the ability to search message history. Now, one of the reasons that this is such an important update is that for months, the App Store charts have been just absolutely dominated by ChatGPT knockoffs or clones or basically just apps purporting to give you ChatGPT-like services, but in a mobile wrapper. Some of those were scams, some of those were problematic, and most importantly, none of them was an official OpenAI ChatGPT app. Even today, after this app has released, there are still something like five of these knockoffs in the top 50 apps overall. Now, by and large, feedback has been very excited. And one of the things that people have discussed a lot is just how fast it feels. Developer McKay Wrigley writes, ChatGPT's iOS app is out. It's beautifully simple and crazy fast. He then shares a video to show off that speed. But in my experience, you really have to try it for yourself. Now, when it comes to the design, there has been a pretty mixed response. Linus Ekenstam tweets, The new ChatGPT designs are bland. I get that they are trying to keep things clean, but if you only have a few elements in your app, at least make sure the ones you got are ace. They have the opportunity to make one hell of a first impression, and I feel they missed. ChatGPT is a consumer product. Most people will have their first experience with AI through this app. Let's make it count. Sebastian DeWitt agrees, saying, Well, the official ChatGPT app for iOS is here rather disappointed to see that the design is so incredibly soulless. One of the coolest problems in design now is to make AI products humane, ethical, and approachable. Removing all soul is not the right move, in my opinion. Still, that wasn't the only take on the design. Jana Wellender writes, the new ChatGPT app is a marvel of product design. The haptics, the clean UX, the dot, not to mention Whisper. Such a delightful way to interact with ChatGPT. Now, I wanted to mention the haptics, the feeling that it actually vibrates in your hand. This is something that in this app feels really natural. It feels like part of the app being alive. It's something that I certainly responded to as well, and I think it is a big piece of the app design that shouldn't be dismissed. Personally, I think that OpenAI was trying to create a design that got out of the way, and I think they accomplished that. The marvel of ChatGPT isn't that it's pretty. The marvel is the world of information that it unlocks access to. Here we have to talk for a moment about Whisper, though. As you heard, the official ChatGPT app gives you the ability not just to type your query, but to actually speak it. And this doesn't use Apple's voice-to-text model, it instead uses Whisper, which is proprietary to OpenAI. Whisper, they write, is an automatic speech recognition system trained on 680,000 hours of multilingual and multitask supervised data collected from the web. So far, people have responded incredibly positively to Whisper. The AI solopreneur writes, the new feature perfectly suits mobile use and leverages OpenAI's Whisper speech recognition model. It's like Siri, but on steroids, 10x. Mies Basai did his own test and writes, Whoa, ChatGPT app can understand more languages than iOS keyboard in dictation mode and can reply back in the same testing in six languages, and it understands well. Nice use of OpenAI Whisper. Makes search even more convenient for a global audience. I also found, for whatever it's worth in my queries, that Whisper was extremely good at understanding exactly what I said, and so in this way, this makes this even more directly competitive and, frankly, a threat to Apple than ChatGPT already was. What about the things that this doesn't have? Obviously, if you've been paying attention, one of the things that people are most excited about with ChatGPT right now is the new suite of plugins. Well, ChatGPT iOS app doesn't have those plugins built in natively. To me, at least initially, that feels okay. It keeps the experience really clean, and a lot of the plugins so far are perhaps for things that are more natively suited to that desktop type of experience. 
It's things like research, travel planning, stuff that isn't necessarily exactly right for a quick on-the-go type of query. However, as some have pointed out, there is a way to access plugins even on the mobile app, which is just resuming an old chat that's already using them. Brex AI lead Pietro Sherano even figured out a way to hack the system so that he could use his designer plugin to build a website from his mobile app. How useful these very simple landing pages are, I think, is in the eye of the beholder, but the fact that he can do it from his phone using only ChatGPT is still pretty cool. Now, one of the reasons that this has people so excited is just the number of new people that it opens up access to. Something like 86% of the world owns a smartphone at this point, and many of them use that as their primary internet-connected device. That's billions of people that ChatGPT's desktop app wasn't going to be able to serve. Now, so far, this app is just for iOS, not for Android, and the official app is only available in the U.S. This is much to the chagrin, of course, of Android users and people outside the U.S., but you have to believe that it's not going to be long before these apps roll out more broadly. Still, the thing that I wanted to focus on for just a moment is how I think that we are, even now, as excited as people are about this, underestimating just how different the experience of having this type of AI in our pockets will be as we're going about living our daily lives on the go. It's amazing to be able to preemptively plan and research things, but think about what it'll mean when you can just do things on the fly. Later this year, my wife and I will be in Paris, and I imagine being able to pull up ChatGPT and ask based on where I was standing at that point in the city, which restaurants were nearby that had some connection to the city's literary past or something like that. ChatGPT could become a tour guide, giving me information about wherever I was. And this is only going to increase as browsing becomes more integrated, which it should over the next few weeks. This is just a basic type of mobile use case that, while available on the web, will be fundamentally different, I feel, when we're using it on mobile. But I guarantee there's going to be so many more things like that where people realize that mobile really is different when it comes to using these AI tools. Now, Sean Purry here yesterday made what I think is just about the safest bet in the history of the world. ChatGPT app will be number one in the App Store within 24 hours. And sure enough, it is. In fact, I'm still seeing something like five apps that are in the top 50, even though they're ChatGPT knockoffs. So friends, as I said at the beginning of this video, I believe that we are now entering era two, the mobile era of ChatGPT. While it may not be the same zero to one shift that last November's introduction of ChatGPT in general introduced, I do believe that it is going to surprise us with just how different the mobile applications of this type of AI can be. I'm certainly excited to have this in my pocket and to explore what it helps me do that I can't even imagine yet, and I'll be looking forward to sharing what I find as I do. That's it for today's AI Breakdown. If you're enjoying this, please like, subscribe, and share. Please also go check out the AI Breakdown podcast and the AI Breakdown newsletter. You can find links to both in the show notes. Until next time, peace.